Hello guys! In this video we will start to build the user interface for our game. We will start creating the start screen. We can create a new scene and select user interface for the root node. So we get a control node. Let's create a rich label text inside of it. Let's enable BB code so we can apply some effects to our text. This text will be the title of our game. As I'm not feeling especially creative at the moment, I will keep with the name of all videos in this series. So the name will be just Platform Shooter. Now let's select a custom font. I've downloaded these fonts from Google Fonts, so you can get them there or feel free to test on other fonts if you wish. Here I will use this StyleScript font. Let's increase the size. We can centralize the text. I guess we can increase the size a bit more. I will add some extra space at the top. Let's add a wave effect. Ok, we can add a background to make the text look better. So we add a color rect. Let's choose our color. I think this one's ok. Let's go back to the text. I will add some extra space at the top. Let's add an outline to the text. We need to add a size to the outline. We make the wave be stronger, adding a amp parameter. And we can make it be faster with this frac parameter. I think we can keep these values. Let's just quickly increase the top space a bit more. So let's save this scene. Let's add another text to inform the player to press the action button. As the player shoots with space, I will write press space to start. Here I will use this Roboto font, you can download it from Google Fonts 2 if you want. We can center this. Now let's create a blink effect. To do that we can use an animation player. Let's make some tests here with the time. You can change that to make it look better. I think it's looking ok, so I will keep it so. Now we can add a script to the scene. We can add the input function. Let's take a look at the input map. Ok, so we have named the action as shoot. So if shoot is pressed, we change the scene to main. Let's run it. Ok, there it is. And if we press space, the game begins. Nice, now we will create a top bar to inform the killed enemies. So we create a new scene. We select user interface again. Let's reduce the height. Here is good to set the main size, so it will use this size when we add this scene to the main scene later. Save it. 
we can add a color rack to make the background. We will use it mainly to see the size of the bar, but we can remove it later if we don't like it. Now let's add a texture rack. Here I literally cut the head of the enemy sprite, so I will use it as a symbol for the enemy skill counter. Let's add a center container to keep this node centralized. We can add a HBox container too, to keep them side by side. Let's add a rich label text to show the number. Let's change the layout of the center container to full rect. Let's adjust the text. I will use the Roboto font again. Let's increase the size here. We can put 0 here because we will start with 0 points. Let's center the points. To update the counter, we will use a custom signal. We will create this custom signal at global script. I will name this signal as killed. We will create this signal so that when an enemy is killed, this global script send this signal. And we can capture this signal with the top bar later. But for now, let's create a new function, enemy killed. This function will add a new killed enemy to the counter and will send the killed signal. Now we will use this function when any enemy is killed. So we need to change the way we kill all enemies, so let's adjust that. Let's change it here too. And I guess that's it. Now let's go back to the top bar scene. We can create a script here. Now we can create a function to update the text when an enemy is killed. We need to connect the global script to this script, so that this script will be listening to the signal. So the parameters here are the name of the signal that we need to listen, the second is the script that we are connecting, that's this one, so we can keep it as self, and the last parameter is the function that will be called when the signal is cached. I guess I will change the name here to avoid confusion. So let's rename the function to enemy killed. Here I forgot to use this str to cast the number to a string. You need to do that before you can put a number at a label. Now let's go back to the main scene. And now we will add a canvas layer to create a new layer above our game so that the top bar will not be moved with the camera. I guess it will look better without the background, so let's remove it. And let's change the stage so that we begin at stage 0. Now let's check the result.
And there we have our top bar. So the enemy doesn't count if it hit us, I guess that's okay. But I didn't like the enemy's counter counting before we start the mission, so let's change that. Here we can use a custom signal again. So let's check the dialogic signal, just to remember what is the signal send when the mission starts. And here we can see it is the yes signal. Now we can go back to the NPC scene. Here is the code that managed the signal. I guess we can achieve what we want sending another signal when the quest is started. I like to keep when possible the signals in the same script, so I will manage this signal by the global script too. So let's create a new signal here, let's call it quest accepted. And we need to create a function to send this signal. Now we can go back to the NPC scene and call this function when the quest is accepted. Now let's go to the killed bar scene and connect it to listen this signal. And we need to create a new function to be called when the signal is fired. And here let's change the scene to visible when it occurs. And we need to change visible to false when the scene starts. But we can make some extra change to the globals to make it just count the enemies when the quest is accepted. So let's add a new variable quest accepted. But rename it to quest started to avoid confusion with the signal's name. A good practice is when you have a boolean variable, start the variable name with is or something that make it fast to understand that this is a boolean. Now when the quest is accepted, we change this variable to true. When the player passes to the next stage, we change the quest started to false again. When the stage is started, we change it to false either. And here at enemies killed we add a verification so that it just add killed enemies if the quest is accepted. So I guess that's it, let's run the game. Ok, so we don't have the top bar, let's kill an enemy. Now let's start the quest. And there is the top bar, and it's starting with zero as expected. And it is increasing the counter when we kill enemies. And we can pass to the next level. Everything seems to be working fine. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoy it, if so please consider subscribe, share, leave a comment, give a thumbs up and thanks for watching, bye!